Uh, so I think from the day Road Dog met me, he didn't like me. Uh, uh, we had a match that you may have heard of uh, against American Alpha at Dallas, NXT Dallas. I was and, there. Um, I was there, dude. It was I, awesome. I, well, thank you. That's one of my favorites of all time. I had in my mind what that match was. I had the story I wanted to tell. I knew the false finishes I wanted. I knew the exact, like, how I wanted the front half to go. I knew exactly what was going to work. And he offered an an idea one night when, when we were, it was the night before Dallas. And we were talking with Jordan and Gable. Uh, and I was explaining to them the, the story that I wanted to tell. And he offered an idea. And I didn't shoot it down. Uh, I just didn't think it fit into the story that I wanted to tell. And he went to an unnamed uh, source who is a very big part of the WWE office. And he proceeded to bury me and uh, tell me that I thought I knew everything or not tell me tell that person that I thought I knew everything and I would never uh, try to learn anything and all this stuff. And, um, and so, uh, you know, I had my own reservations about him and then come, uh, later that year, I want to say it was right around December, uh, people thought there was a, some sort of uh, gimmick gauntlet tag team match on SmackDown. And for some reason, the fans thought the Revival were gonna make, was going to make their debut there. And, um, and the, the fans were tweeting and, you know, freaking out over it. And the, the match was over. And, you know, we were heels. And so I went on Twitter and said, you fans thought – that we were going to be in a stupid, we were going to, we were going to uh, debut on the main roster in a stupid gimmick, uh, stupid gimmick gauntlet match. You've lost your mind or something like that. And at the time, uh, Road Dog was booking, and uh, he took offense to that because I said stupid gimmick, and he proceeded to write on Twitter that if I kept it up, he would make sure that I would never make it to the main roster, which if I never make it to the main roster, that cuts into my money, which cuts into the money that I make for my family, which I can provide for my daughter who goes to college, or I can make sure my wife has food on the table. Um, and that's what bothered me. And then right after he put that tweet out, I got a call from Mark Carano or a text from Mark Carano, and it, lead, it led to a call from both of those guys to make sure they, um, they, they, they were uh, covering their tracks because uh, Road Dog basically said he was going to make sure that I would never have uh, any advancement in the company, and legally they're not allowed to do that because they're in power as a position in the in the office. And for him to say I'm going to make sure that you're not going to move up and you can't uh, you can't advance your 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 money, uh, that you know legally he shouldn't be able to do that. So they were trying to cover their tracks. Uh, and then fast forward, and I'm sure we'll talk about this one day. Raw 25, I had to go in there and make sure that all of uh, Sean and his friends looked like a million bucks. And we got to the back, and Road Dog passed right by me. Didn't say thank you after he bumped around for him. The only person to say thank you was Sean Waltman, but we'll get to that. Um, so, uh, as, as the person, I listen, as a, as a wrestler, I respect everything he's done for the business, and I respect the path that he's paved for us. Um, as a person, I don't know how much respect for I have for him. 